Hello, this is Craig Resnick coming to you from the 2016 ARC Advisory Group Forum in Orlando, Florida. With me today is my special guest, Greg Connery, Senior Vice President of uh, Strategy at Schneider Electric. How are you doing today, Greg? Thank you, Craig. You know, we keep hearing a lot of discussion about the industrial internet of things, IIoT. It's probably the prevailing theme at this forum. Uh, give us your perspective on uh, industrial internet of things. Well, I think, first of all, that's a very good question. And you hear a lot about the internet of things. Uh, the general public talks about that. They connect it with their smartphones and you can do just about anything with it. And I think the important thing about the phrase you just said is the word industrial, because the industrial brings in the robustness and the cybersecurity that allows you to take IoT into an industrial application. We look at it in three ways. We look at it in smart manufacturing, which is traditional industry 4.0. We look at augmented operator, and we look at it in asset performance management. And pretty much we think any of the applications you can have around IIoT are gonna fit into one of those three categories. Yeah, now what do you see from Schneider Electric's perspective as the practical applications, the applications your customers would be willing to uh, consider and purchase? Well, that's a very good question because there is an awful lot of hype around it. Um, people talk about you can, you can connect your toaster to the internet if you would. Why? I don't know, but you could. Uh, what value you get, who knows. But if I look at some of the applications we have, and I'll take our drives for example, we can have drives connected to pumps Pumps are typically uh, very uneducated, uh, dumb pieces of equipment. They turn based on how much power you give them. But in a drive, you can actually put the pump curve. You can embed it into the drive, so when the drive sends the electricity down to the pump, it knows how fast the pump should turn. If the pump doesn't perform to the, to the, to the value it should, then the drive can actually contact somebody. It can give a note to somebody's phone. It can pop up an alarm on a screen. It can allow you to maximize your performance that you get out of that pump. And that's a real world example of IRT we have today. Now, some of the, some of the areas that you've implemented um, IOT at customer sites, certainly the drive is a, is a great example. So what are some of the applications that you've implemented uh, IOT? Well, that's another, another good example. We use it internally ourselves in our collaborative engineering environment. We call this Flex. It allows you to do uh, a large amount of engineering, very complex projects with people in remote and distant applications. We track change management, we track engineering uh, specifications, we do all of the work we can uh, for a large extended team in a very large project and maximizing the speed and time we can get with a very highly accurate system. Okay. Now, the, one of the big questions people have is this generates a tremendous amount of data. How do you see this uh, data being used, uh, whether it be from Schneider Electric's perspective or your customer's perspective? Uh, that's a good question. And people talk about big data all the time. But what we used to actually talk about was data mining. If you think about what we used to do, we took process data, we historized it, and we started doing all sorts of analytics on it, and you came up with, with trends and theories and conclusions, and you were always looking in the rearview mirror. Now, with IoT, we can take that data in real-time applications, and we can use it to make decisions, to help us in decision-making support. So you can get real information about a process, and you can guide the process as it is going on. And I think that's the real key that if you use big data in the right way. Now, do you see IoT also helping in the supply chain? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If you think about when our grandparents would have bought a car, they could buy a Model T in any color they wanted as long as it was black. But I think where we're headed towards now in supply chain is you're gonna to get to a point where you can buy a lot size of one, and a lot size of one is going to be commercially viable for production facilities going forward. You're gonna have the flexibility and the ability to make these kind of changes that still makes you a competitive process, even if you've got very highly customized outcomes. Now, some of the customers say, is IoT expensive? Um, sometimes there's a certain amount of skepticism about IoT, whether it be cost, security, even trying to come up with a return on investment, return on asset calculations to justify the expense. What's your perspective on that? No, it's, it's absolutely, in a, in a lot of our industries where we're very conservative, process industry is a very good example. Uh, sometimes people in our industry talk about racing to be second with an, with, with an installation. But you think about a lot of mission critical control, it's hardwired, it's robust, it's, it's sensors to, that are involved in, in, in how they run the process. But a lot of IoT can be done with secondary sensors. They can be wireless. Um, there's a lot of startup companies looking at how you get data up into the cloud. So you're really looking at fairly low cost installations. And these installations provide data that then give you the asset performance management. They give you the augmented operator, which is a more efficient person. So they end up having, I think, very strong payback calculations. 
think it's going to be an area where, where plants find that it's not so much an investment, but a way to sweat the assets they have, whether that be a human or whether it be a hard asset in the facility. You know, and sometimes the customers also wonder, what's going to be the effect on the workforce? I mean, could be positive, could be detrimental. Uh, what's your perspective on the IoT's effect on the workforce? Uh, again, change always makes people worried. And, and I think if, I, if you think about it in comparison to robotics, everybody's nervous that robotics uh, come in uh, and, and a robot comes in and it, and it takes my job. I don't really think that's the case in IoT at all. I think it's going to change people's jobs. Certainly, we're going to have much more demand for people who understand uh, big data, who can do the analytics, people who can maintain the IoT system, uh, and lots of opportunities for startup companies and people to come up with the ideas on how to get that data into the cloud. So the jobs will change, but I don't think they'll go away. There's still going to be the need for a human being in there somewhere to actually understand the data and provide the decision-making support based on the input he gets. Well, thank you very much, Greg. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you today. You're welcome. And this is Craig Resnick coming to you from the 2016 ARC Orlando Forum. Thank you very much. Have a great day.